All right, welcome back to Fruitport High School's Meteorology Lectures. Today's lecture is an introduction to the atmosphere, um, the different temperatures as height increases, and also the change in pressure. And those two things, pressure and temperature, determine the different layers of the atmosphere that we'll talk about. Okay, so we start with the atmosphere. The atmosphere is just a cloud of gas and sus suspended solids that extend from the Earth's surface out many thousands of miles. They become thinner the higher you go away from the Earth, or with distance away from the Earth. And the gases of the atmosphere are held on by the Earth's gravitational pull. Okay, so here's a chart that shows the different gases that make up the atmosphere. Um, the two major ones that you'll be quizzed on is, is nitrogen makes up 78% of the atmospheric gases, Oxygen makes up about 21% of the atmospheric gases. And then these other ones are much smaller parts of the atmosphere. But just know that the third most common gas in the atmosphere is argon. So the most common gas is nitrogen. This dilutes the oxygen and prevents the rapid burning that oxygen would provide at the Earth's surface. Also used in the protein production in living things. You might remember that from biology with the chin-ops lesson. Um, obviously, oxygen is used by all living things for respiration. And then water vapor is present in up to 4% of the total volume. So this would be, if 0% of water vapor exists, what the gas composition would be made up percentage-wise. And you can see how it changes as water vapor increases from 0 to 4%. The atmosphere that we will focus on most in this class is the troposphere. And because it's a meteorology class, we'll focus most on this because almost all of the Earth's weather occurs here. The troposphere starts at the Earth's surface and extends anywhere from 4 to 12 miles above the Earth's surface. What you'll learn a little bit from this lecture PowerPoint is that the troposphere is higher at the equator than at the poles. Later on, we're going to focus on how warm air has higher heights and cooler air has lower heights. With height in the troposphere, the air becomes thinner and pressure decreases. In fact, temperature decreases at about 4 degrees Fahrenheit per 1,000 feet. The decrease in temperature as you go higher up in the troposphere is referred to as the lapse rate. The layer above the tropos troposphere is the stratosphere. The stratosphere extends from the top of the troposphere up to about 31 miles up. This layer holds very little water vapor. And unlike the temperature in the, in the troposphere, the temperature in the stratosphere actually increases as you go higher. Anvil-shaped cumulonimbus clouds, if they get tall enough, can form at the lower boundary of the stratosphere. And here's actually a picture of one of those anvil clouds right here. Because the temperature starts to increase as you go up in the stratosphere, it prevents these clouds from rising anymore and gives us the flat shape here that you see. So this is actually, actually this cloud right here is actually bursting out of the troposphere and into the stratosphere. And then the other layers of the atmosphere, um, just to round it off, we don't really focus much on these in, in meteorology, but you have the mesosphere, which helps to burn up meteors, the thermosphere, which protects us by absorbing UV and X-ray radia X radiation, and then the exosphere that extends into outer space. Okay, so here's a couple of nice charts that show the temperature change with height and the different things that occur in different layers of the atmosphere. So I like looking at this one right here because this is the surface of the Earth down here at the bottom, and it increases, the height increases up to 130 kilometers above the Earth's surface. But if you look at the temperature scale here, temperature scales at the bottom, as this right here starts to go higher up, 10 kilometers high, the temperature is dropping as you go higher up in the troposphere. Then you enter the tropopause, that's the boundary between the troposphere and stratosphere, 
And once you get into the stratosphere, temperature begins to increase again. Once you get into the mesosphere, temperature drops. And in the thermosphere, temperature increases. So these boundaries are actually determined by the temperature change. Where the temperature stops falling and starts to rise, that's the boundary between the troposphere and stratosphere. But again, for this class, just know that as you go higher away from the Earth in the troposphere, temperature drops. That's called the lapse rate. As you go higher away from the troposphere and the stratosphere, temperature increases. And you can see all of the weather occurs down here in the troposphere. Um, and then these large, very large, high cumulonimbus clouds can actually reach into the lower part of the stratosphere. And then this image over here on the left um, just shows you all of the different things that occur in the different parts of the atmosphere. So some of the highest mountains, once this, once this part gets out of the way down here, some of those highest mountains in the troposphere. And then you have your weather balloons that are launched. They reach into the stratosphere, uh, meteors burning up in the mesosphere, northern lights, and um, where the space shuttle would orbit around the Earth in the different parts of the atmosphere. Okay, so here's how air pressure plays a role in the atmosphere. The layers of the atmosphere, um, all layers of the atmosphere, have atoms and molecules which are constantly moving. The more molecules and atoms that you have on top of each other, the higher the pressure. So higher pressure exists near the surface because there's more particles on top of each other. Lower pressure exists in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And what you'll find is a common theme from this meteorology class is the movement from high pressure to low pressure or the flow from high pressure to low pressure. So when you have different areas of pressure in different parts of the atmosphere, the air is constantly moving to different areas of pressure. Here's, where, uh, here's what changes air pressure, um, the changing number of particles. More particles would be higher pressure or more particles in a given space would be higher pressure. Less particles in the same amount of space would be lower pressure. Adding or subtracting heat energy changes the speed of the particles. Higher speed would be higher pressure. And then pressure, just no pressure can be exerted in all different directions. Air pressure does decrease with height because there's less particles on top of things the higher you go. So here is how height is actually talked about in meteorology. Instead of talking about feet and kilometers for height, we often use pressure for height. And pressure in this chart is measured in millibars. The highest pressure is located near the surface. So if you look near the bottom of this chart right here, it's about 1,000 millibars of pressure, a little more than 1,000 millibars of pressure for sea level pressure and that's at the surface of the Earth. As you go higher up, the pressure decreases. So we're gonna get into, on this slide and this PowerPoint in a little bit, we'll talk about the 500 millibar heights because you can, you can learn a lot about temperature and, and, uh, and what might happen with future weather reports or future, future forecasts based on the 500 millibar heights. So this is normal 500 millibar heights, about 5,600 meters. But you'll find that the 500 millibar height changes depending on the temperature of the air. And just to review and keep in mind again that warmer air has higher heights, cooler air has lower heights. So again, when you read the Grand Rapids National Weather Service um, weather forecast each day, they'll often talk about heights in millibars. So the 850 millibar height, the 500 millibar heights, this is occurring at 250 millibars where the jet stream might be found or where airplanes fly. So instead of, instead of referring to the actual height in feet and meters and, and kilometers, they refer to height away from the surface of the earth in pressure. Okay, so here's how air pressure is measured. The units of pressure can be measured in inches of mercury, which is about 29.92 inches of mercury at sea level, or in millibars. And sea level, 
um, standard sea level in millibars is 1,013.2 millibars. So again, back to this right here, you can see at the surface where the 1,000 millibars is located. And then as you go higher up the 850 millibar area, the 700 millibar area, et cetera. Changes in pressure are caused by changes in density, which is caused by changes in temperature. Cold air, you know this from chemistry or from physics or middle school physical science, cold air is more dense than warm air. So cooler air will sink, warmer air will rise. The 500 millibar level is at 5,600 meters on average. So we can look at the level of the 500 millibar um, pressure and determine or forecast if we will be close to average temperatures, cooler than average, or um, warmer than average. And then measuring air pressure are isobars. Those are lines on a map that connect areas of equal pressure. Okay, so here's the 500 millibar height um, demonstration right here. Normally, the 500 millibar height on average is at about 5,600 meters above the Earth's surface. So if you were to go up, let's let's put it this way: if you were to go up in a weather or in a, a hot air balloon, 5,600 meters above the Earth's surface, on average, that would be about 500 millibars of pressure. When the air is warmer, that average height rises. Okay, so warmer air causes the 500 millibar pressure height to be higher. Cooler air sinks, it's more dense. So that causes the 500 millibar height to be lower. And we'll talk about that more in class and give you some examples. But, but again, if, if we're forecasting or predicting warmer than average temperatures, we base that off of because the 500 millibar height on a prediction map would be higher. It would be higher than the 5,600 meters. So here is a weather map that shows isobars. Remember, isobars connect equal areas of pressure. All of these lines right here, if you trace around them, that are part of the same line, would be equal areas of pressure. And that's, again, that's what the isobar is. Okay, so with air pressure, uh, there's two different types of pressure that we talk about and that we see on weather maps, and you can see those here, areas of low pressure and areas of high pressure. Low pressure has a counterclockwise spin. When we looked at the hurricanes on the satellite image, you saw that they were spinning counterclockwise. Hurricanes are areas of low pressure. Um, the air is rising inward, and usually we associate low pressure with cloudy, cooler days. High pressure, the air is spinning clockwise. The air is pushing down, and that prevents clouds from forming. So usually high pressure is associated with clear and a little bit warmer days. We remember it as high pressure are happy days. So H and high and H and, H and happy. Low pressure, um, again, typically cloudy and cooler. Okay, and there's different ways that the heat can be transferred through the atmosphere. Uh, the main heat source is the sun. Heat's transferred in three different ways, through radiation, conduction, and convection. Radiation is just the transfer of energy through space. That's those... Uh, the ultraviolet radiation from the sun that can transfer through a vacuum. Conduction is the transfer of energy from one substance to another. And then convection would be transfer of energy in a fluid convection current, um, the flow from one area to another. So that would be the transfer through the atmosphere. And then here is a diagram to show that. Again, energy from the sun through radiation. Remember, those rays can transfer through the vacuum of space. Conduction heats the ground. That heating of the ground rises and heats the air. And then the convection is that warm air rising and then eventually sinking again. And we'll talk more about the rising and sinking when we get into um, the different wind belts around the globe. 
Okay, so that's the power part, PowerPoint part, but I do want to show you um, a couple of these maps here. This right here is a measure of the 500 millibar height, and it's the difference from average, or it's the sway from average, the swing away from average. So in simple terms, predicting whether we have a better chance of warmer than average or cooler than average. And what you'll see when I move this map is that ridges, or, uh, ridges where these heights rise here and troughs form where they sink. Usually when we're under a ridge, so higher heights, we have warmer than average temperatures. Okay, and usually when we're under a trough, which you'll see one coming as I uh, go to different parts of the of the week and the month, we have cooler than average temperatures. So watch when I move this map right here. Okay, so this is coming up a day and two days in advance. And as you see, as you can see, as we get closer to the end of September, you can see this trough forming here. So a trough is the dip in the 500 millibar heights. And this is a pretty good trough over the Eastern or Midwestern United States. So by, this is to September 30th, by September 30th, we can expect cooler than average temperatures. And this is based on the climatology from 1981 to 2010. So based on what we had for average 500 millibar height temperatures, we can then, um, go away from average or stay near average, um, cooler or warmer. So you can see, and this happens a lot, when there's a trough in one part of the United States, there's often a ridge in the other part. And these blue and red colors are a nice color code too because you can look at blue and you're thinking cooler temperatures. And then red seems like it would be warmer temperatures, which it actually is. So the Western United States is, is under this ridge right here. So they can expect warmer than average temperatures around September 30th. And the Eastern United States is under this trough. And again, if you if you if you were to lay this map of the United States flat, the 500 millibar heights, the 500 millibar pressure would actually be lower to Michigan, and the 500 millibar heights out here would actually be higher away from the ground um, around Oregon and Washington. So again, as we keep going, you can see we're under this trough for a little bit of time. And then even another trough up there. And then it looks like we might be going a little bit back to normal by October 9th. But that's where the Climate Prediction Center also gets their, or issues their prediction forecast. They look at those 500 millibar heights, and this is from September 30th to October 6th. And again, this is probability or the chance of this occurring. There's a much greater chance of below normal temperatures in the Eastern US from September 30th to October 6th. And out west, based on probability and based on those 500 millibar heights, there's a much greater chance of above average temperatures. And here is six to 10 days out from September 28th to October 2nd. Again, if you like that fall weather, there is a, a greater chance 50 to 60 percent chance for Michigan here of below normal temperatures. If you like warmer weather, head out west, Nevada, California, there's an 80 to 90 percent chance or 90 to 100 percent chance of above average temperatures. Here's that satellite image again. And you can see we talked about low pressure spinning counterclockwise. So you can see a couple of areas of low pressure here that have that counterclockwise spin. And then high pressure spinning clockwise. So you can see some areas of clockwise spin here also. But it's easier to focus on or see this low pressure system on this map. And here's another one right here. 
Okay, and that is it for your lecture on the atmosphere. We will review and reinforce and do more practice when I see you in class.